Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sterling Channel 19. We are here for some boys volleyball as Sterling will host Camden Eastside this afternoon. I'm Brian McLernan, joined by Dan Leakin and some history here for Camden Eastside. They're a 1-7 on the year, 0-6 in the Olympic Patriot with their only win coming against a Camden Academy Charter where they won two sets to one. Sterling is 2-10 on the season. They're 2-3 in the Olympic National Conference their third place in the national division. Their two wins came against Camden Academy Charter and Camden High School, which both came in straight sets. And junior Vincenzo Mariez and sophomore Sam Boykin lead the team in kills with 21 each. Dan, they have been very impressive here for these for this boys' volleyball squad. Yeah, and they have some impressive bounce, so they really get up there and, I mean, their technique is really nice, and they perform really well together. And uh, an addition back to the lineup is Will Stubbs, who is really going to help this team out and help them get some points on the board. Yeah, both uh, Vinny and Sam, they both lead the team in blocks as well with 15. And junior Noah McBride, he leads the team in digs with 85. And junior Davis Holloway, he leads the team in assists with 60 and aces with 18. And for Sterling last year, they were 14 and 11, undefeated in the Olympic National. They went 10 and 0, and they were a very senior-dominated roster. But they seem to be a bit more mixed overall this year in terms of mixing the seniors, the juniors, and so and so. And some history between these two teams: Sterling has been pretty dominant against this squad. They're 5 and 0 in their last five matchups. But the last time these two teams met was all the way back in 2016. And that was before Camden Eastside was even called Camden Eastside. They were known as Woodrow Wilson before this, before the, the last time these two teams met. So very interesting to see right there. Yeah, that was a fun little statistic that Brian mentioned to me right before we started. And honestly, I was shocked because I know they went through some name changes, but if that was the last time these two teams played. That's insane. Yeah, I believe they were known as Camden Wilson as well. And yeah, then that's right. were Woodrow Wilson, and then now are Camden Eastside, which is what they are now. But yeah, these two teams struggling to start their year again. Sterling two and ten, Camden Eastside one and seven. So two teams, unfortunately, at the uh, bottom of the barrel. But hopefully, Sterling looking to add to their win total today with a home win. Sterling was not very successful in securing the win the last time that. We covered boys volleyball here on Channel 19, but looking to bounce back here this afternoon on a very hot Monday afternoon. And the temperature is rising quite drastically during this week. Yeah, it really is. Jensen stepped outside and said it was nice and warm out, but uh, I'm not going to take my bets out there. It seems like the, uh, the temperature is a bit high today. It's at a solid 90 degrees right now. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay inside. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll do the same thing. I was outside for a fifth block gym, and it, it, it was pretty bad. I mean, we were, we were playing soccer and moving around a little bit, but, Oof. boy, it was it was hot and, you know, not, not great conditions to be in, especially because of a drastic switch because we were, we, we were dealing with some rain and some cooler temperatures not too long ago, but now it's bright and sunny and very hot. I'd say maybe a nice day for some baseball, but. Unfortunately, our, our fight and fills. Well, I think our baseball team is away today. Yeah, I think they're, I think they start a three or four game road trip yeah. before they come back. So. I was going to mention the fills, and I was going to say, unfortunately, they're in L.A., but then I realized you were talking about the, the Sterling Knights. Yeah, well, I'm not quite yet. I mean, they do play the first game of a three-game series in L.A., Today, but today. We, we will talk more about that um, later in this broadcast. We'll give our little Philly sports review on how we're feeling. But right now we're going to focus on some some boys volleyball here on this beautiful afternoon. Yeah, we have about less than, a little less than three minutes to go before we get underway. Camden East Side just getting their warm-ups in. Hopefully this is a good one here today, and hopefully Sterling can... Add to their win total. Which they, uh, at this point in their season, they desperately need. Uh, they have a lot of young talent on this team. I mean, pretty highlighted by uh, by Will Stubbs. You see a lot of um, Vinny Mariaz in there a lot, and you see a lot of Ryan Horn 
and Davis Holloway, and they're they're going to be your main contributors. Davis Holloway is going to give you the sets. He's going to get you where you need to be, and, I mean, the other three execute really well, have a lot of the kills on the team. Will Stubbs, we're seeing him for the first time, his first game back this season due to injury, but definitely a key piece for this Knights team in, uh, in trying to get this record going. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the last time that Sterling, that we covered... Uh, boys volleyball it, the first game it was fairly it was fairly back and forth for a little bit I believe it was like 11 11 in the first game but then it quickly got away from Sterling and they lost that one pretty convincingly and then in game two they were down as much as 12 nothing before they secured their first point so realistically if if that's going to be the result of game two you're most likely not looking at a win there and unfortunately Sterling couldn't get the job done an important thing for Sterling is not to get caught in that streak. In volleyball, a lot of the times, uh, teams can really go on streaks. It's almost similar to basketball in a sense that once you get one, you can really start, you know, getting to the ground running. And it's going to be important for Sterling to not get caught up in that, break that streak, and try to reverse the momentum in this matchup against Eastside today. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're facing uh, a struggling Camden Eastside team who has only won one game in their schedule, and both of uh, both teams have beaten Camden Academy Charter. And also one interesting thing to look at, Sterling's two wins this year are both against Camden-related teams. So may we see a third? We'll have to find out shortly, less than 30 seconds until the warm-ups for Camden Eastside is over and we'll get officially underway here at the castle. This will be the only uh, sporting event that we'll cover this week here on Channel 19. After a uh, pretty action-packed week last week, uh, the the three stooges of Brian, Danny, and Jensen, we need a bit of a break, uh, especially going into prom. It'll be quite nice. But we will be back. Um, we'll be back next week with some sports coming to you, and then we'll get in a more consistent way to end the season for some spring sports. Yeah, we're at about, like, I'd say around the midway point yeah. in terms of spring sports action this season. I was just talking to uh, Adriana Zazada of Girls Lacrosse about that, and I said something along the lines of starting your season, and she was like, dude, we're midway through. I was like, it has flown. This it has. Went, this has went pretty fast. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's blown by really quickly. Unfortunately, because I really like spring sports. I, I have a lot mm -hmm. of fun broadcasting a lot of the sports. I mean, I'm a lacrosse. I love lacrosse at heart. I mean, and I know you love your baseball. So, we have a lot of fun doing these games, and we don't get to do them often because of the absence of our our uh, main man, Mr. K. So, unfortunately, it coming to an end makes me a little sad. But I mean, it's been a lot of fun to start the year. It has, yeah. And hopefully, we can get everyone some more baseball, some more lacrosse, both boys and girls. Definitely some girls because I know they've been on a, a bit of a streak recently. And some other spring sports as well as the season will slowly come to a close eventually and we'll get some playoffs in late May, early June. Prom will be this weekend. So be on, that'll be on Friday. And pretty much right after that, it's pretty much in the home stretch in terms of things going on here at Sterling. Mm -hmm. Less than 50 days until graduation. Way less than 50 days, right? We only, we only yeah, have, it's, it's like... We only have 32 days of normal school left, including half days and stuff like that. But Not including weekends, though, right? No, 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 not including. Oh, that's what you're including. Gotcha. I, was, I was including, like, all days until... My bad. Yeah, because we graduate June 14th. Cool. That makes me a little sad. No need to start off the broadcast sad. No. Start off in a good mood, and let's hope for a nice Sterling win today as the Knights desperately need it in this game. And, you know, we just mentioned about the Woodrow Wilson back in 2016. I think the Eastside Libero is wearing a Wilson uh, penny, which is a little bit interesting to see. Yeah, he's got the penny. He's got the headband. He, he's got it all. Yeah. That's, that's actually kind of funny. I think we just mentioned that. And you know, the libero for Camden East side, that's Yadier Burgos. 
This Camden Eastside team, not very big. They only have 11 rostered kids. Compared to Sterling's pretty large bench, if I do say so myself, there are a lot of kids on this team. And I believe it's, if I'm counting this right, I think they have six seniors as well. So out of the 11 kids, six of them are seniors. Wow. First serve of the day for Camden Eastside, and we are underway here at the Castle for game one. And that one can't go over the net, and Camden Eastside will get their first points. It's 1-0. Jonathan Turner serves it. Sterling trying to even it up, and they do right there. A bit interesting seeing Davis Holloway go for that go for that hit over the net, especially regarding his size and what he does. Normally he sets up his players, but you know, he wanted a little bit of the glory for himself. Here's the serve from Holloway. Not enough at one here early, and the tap will go out of play. And Sterling will take their first lead. It's two to one. Holloway to serve yet again. And that one just hits the line. I thought it was a bit too strong at first, but a nice job by Will Stubbs, who is back in the lineup to give Sterling a 3-1 lead. Definitely a good way to start off his season with a ferocious kill. And that was a really nice spike there from Will. 3-1 here early, Sterling on top. And a bit of a miscommunication there by Camden East Side will give Sterling the point, and they, they now lead 4-1. to one. So four straight points here for the Knights. Just gets over. Can Sterling keep it alive? They cannot. And the point will go to Camden East side. Definitely some nice back and forth action going on so far here, but if I'm Sterling, I really want to settle it down a little bit, start to catch into a rhythm. That one swatted over toward the middle. Sterling with a 4-2 lead here in game one. And that one blocked by Marias. And the Knights take a 5-2 lead. Eastside looks also a little discombobulated to start this game. They're really rushing a lot, and they also have to find a way to really slow down against this Sterling defense because they got some pretty tall guys in the front, and it's going to be tough to get a lot past them, but you gotta, you got to find a way to break the system. Here's Ryan Horn with the serve there. Couldn't get enough on it. He'll check out. Dio Emerson will check in. And that one way too strong. Point goes to the Knights. You might recognize one of the people doing the flags over there on Sterling's side. That's Richie. He's a member of the tech crew. He is sub-zero the way the chillness just reflects <laughs> on. Exactly. Chillest man alive. Love that guy. Love Richie. 6-4 Knights, almost a miscommunication, but able to recover. And Sterling will let that go out, and they'll get the point. It's now 7-4. And as much as Sterling has had this lead, it really sense to me that they have still have not found that rhythm where they can comfortably have an offensive possession and end it with an exclamation point. So I really want to see more of just good communication and a little bit more organization from the Sterling offense. Eastside did not have it there. It's now 8-4. to four. And there goes another point for Sterling. The little guy stands tall. Davis Holloway with a really nice hit back. And um, Eastside, again, just a little discombobulated there. And there's another point for Sterling. Yeah, Holloway was using all 5-6 of his frame. 
Small but mighty. Exactly. There's a reason David beat Goliath. Nice block and a nice job by East Side to send it over the net. And McBride got frozen up. Point goes to the Tigers. Nine to six here in game one. Try to serve again. There we go. And the block unsuccessful there for East Side, so the Knights will take a 10 to six lead. And you could tell that Sterling desperately needed this power, this, this gunpowder from Will Stubbs. I mean, just a ferocious slam every time. And he really brings that, that exclamation mark to every offensive possession. That one did not go out. Sterling will get the point. It was rather close, but great call by the referee. And that one will head on out. Tigers will get the point back. 11 to seven, your score here in game one. Going rather quickly. Oh yeah. Volleyball is definitely one of the quicker sports that we cover. The last, the last broadcast we did for Sterling Volleyball, that broadcast lasted 47 minutes. Wow. And granted, we only saw two games, but still 47 minutes is rather short compared to close to about two, two and a half hours for baseball, yeah. two hours-ish for lacrosse. Our five-hour stream of, or our five-hour um, stream of film for the two lacrosse games we covered earlier in April. That was a, a bit of a doozy day for me. Yeah, I, I was only able to make the second half of the second game, but I, I remember I was pretty exhausted that day. Trust me, I bet it's a lot. Back-to-back -back games. Sterling with an 11 to nine lead. Too strong, and the Tigers pull within one. And a bit of a longer possession there for both teams. It was good to see some organization, some you know, offensive plays, and except for just hitting it back over and giving the other team the advantage. And now the Tigers have made this a brand new game. It's 11-11. The last time we saw this, Sterling was unable to truly break away for a win in game one last time. They get the point right there. Nice little love tap from Davis Holloway. Gives the Knights their lead back. And that was exactly what I made earlier. Or the point I made earlier in this game, I mean, you've got to make sure you can break away when times get tough. That really shows the resiliency of a team. That really shows the drive and how much you really want the game. So in order for Sterling to win this, they got to start breaking away a little bit more and maintaining that lead. Tigers looking for the point back. And it doesn't look like they'll get it. No one able to catch up, and it's now 13-11 in favor of Sterling. The Slim Reaper using some of that power and absolutely just decimating that ball is a really powerful spike there from Marias. In Sterling's last five games, all of them have been decided in straight sets. Point goes to the Knights right there, make it 14-11. And they seem like they're in that rhythm, and I said earlier, actually a few minutes ago, that they gotta stay in that rhythm and start pulling away a little bit more in order to prevent you know, that straight set or that 1-1 that one -one set later in the, uh, later in the match. Tigers are going to have to try and battle back yet again. And the point goes to the Knights right there. That's four straight for them. That's now 15-11. Ten away from claiming game one. That one swatted way too strong. It's now 16-11. And we'll get our first timeout from the Tigers and the Knights 
Dan, as you said, getting out into that rhythm and now hold a five-point lead. Yeah, we've seen a lot of some high IQ plays from the Knights so far. I mean, we've seen Davis Holloway, I mean, small at size, but really doing some work around the net to use his head a little bit, bump it in a place where they're not in. And we've seen, you know, the power from Will Stubbs. We've seen some power from the Slim Reaper Mary has as well. So it's been interesting to see how the Knights are using their strategies and using their offensive possessions to their advantage so far and have this five-point lead. But, Dan, as we're in this timeout right here, we get to talk about some Philly sports a little bit. We all we, we love doing that. Where do you want to start? Well, the Phils did just sweep the Padres in San Diego. They looked very, very good. Uh, even in the game where they did start Taiwan Walker, I still think they looked fairly solid. They didn't really have to battle back too much in that game. Bryson Stott had a multi-homer game. Uh, Johan Rojas came up with a clutch RBI late in the game, and the bullpen really shut it down. Yeah, and it's been really interesting to see the Phillies not crack under pressure like they do at times, and they've been really able to you know, finish out games, which has been one of the most important parts of the season so far, is giving their, their starters some back support. Point goes to the Knights right there, and the Phillies, they're uh, one of only four teams who have 19 wins on the year, which is the most in Major League Baseball. It's them, the Guardians, the uh, Yankees, and the Braves. And they could be uh, a team to clinch 20 tonight with a win over the Los Angeles Angels as they start their series against them. Yep, they'll play the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. In L.A., three-game series. It's Christopher Sanchez on the mound tonight against Griffin Canning. Who? Griffin Canning. Wow, I've never heard of that name before. And then tomorrow it's Turnbull. He'll be on the mound for the Phils. And then Wheeler will start game three. And then it's back to Philly. It'll be back to Philly for a four-game series against the San Francisco Giants. That's going to be a good series. I mean, it's going to be see. It's going to be cool to see um, the Phillies get a little bit more tenser competition. I mean, we talked about the Padres being a good team on the last broadcast, but I mean, there hasn't been a team to really, you know, stress the Phillies out much this season, other than the Braves in the beginning of the season. Yeah, the Phillies. They've won 11 of their last 13. Their only two losses coming in that four-game series against the Reds, where they split. But I mean, their pitching has looked very good as always. I mean, pretty much throughout the whole season, they've looked fairly strong in terms of that starting rotation. That one tipped out. Point goes to the Knights. They're now three away from a game one win. And, I mean, as we were talking about the Phillies, the Knights have really done a great job of just pulling away. And what was a five-point advantage has turned into an 11-point advantage in the span of five minutes. The Knights have 11 straight points. This was tied at 11 apiece not too long ago. Make it 12 straight. And just not enough organization on the east side side of the ball. And as they're going to call another timeout here, as they should, to try and just get some spark back into the players. Anyway, this gives us a spark back into our Phillies conversation. Yeah, I mean, pitching's been great. The offense has come through when they've needed to. It's overall, that's going to be. I'll be at one of the Giants games. I'll be. I'll be there game three of that series. That'll be on Sunday. Nice. That'll be, that's my first Phillies game in person this year. Yeah, I have still have yet to. I mean, I've had a pretty jam-packed schedule with Jazz Band. Um, um, Are we going to the one in, like, that Wednesday or whatever? I, I think you might be. I, I think I have something that day. I don't think I can go. Oh, uh, okay. But Brian and Danny will be taking a trip down to Baltimore to watch the um, later, probably this month or next month. Um, to watch the Phillies. Oh, no, it's the day after graduation. To watch the uh, Phillies. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? I don't. Uh, graduation parties are getting planned. So maybe. So you're going to ditch Phillies Orioles for a graduation? No, okay. Well, I will be sending Brian pictures of my Camden Yards hot dog as I sit in the section right in the outfield. Well, I, I still might be able to go. I know. I'm messing with you. I hope I can go. I hope you can go, too. The Knights one point away from a game one win. And that will do it. Tips off the hands of a Camden Eastern player, or Camden Eastside player, excuse me, and that will do it for game one. The Knights win it convincingly 25-11 to 11 as they score 14. 
13 consecutive points to take the dub. And that's a great start. They're doing a good job of just capitalizing off of East Side's mistakes. And, you know, that's going to take you to a victory. You yeah, capitalize, that's the best you can do. Yeah, and uh, you said, Dan, they had to get into a rhythm, and they couldn't quite do that to start. But once they did, it, they just kept on rolling and rolling and rolling. And then eventually were able to get the win pretty convincingly. And now they're going, in, they're going into game two with pretty much as much momentum as you can possibly have. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we'll put away the Phillies talk for a minute. We'll talk Eagles for a second. Um, we did discuss, I think we discussed the uh, Quinion Mitchell drafting on air. We did. Um, but we have not discussed the later rounds. Brian, how do you feel the Eagles did drafting, you know, two, three, four, five, six? Well, they got they got Cooper DeGene, which uh, me and you are at Red Robin when they drafted Indeed. Cooper DeGene. And our waitress actually called it. She was yes. like, I have a good feeling they're going to draft DeGene here. And we all kind of looked at her like, I don't know. They might go linebacker. Dan, you are, I, I know you were hoping for Edger and Cooper, but. You don't understand. He's huge. He literally fills the whole. I'm not going to get started on this, but I did want Edger and Cooper, and then he went to the Packers a couple picks after. Mm -hmm. So it was a, I was a bit ruffled. My feathers were a bit ruffled about that. Um, and then round three, uh, pick 94, I, I think. The Eagles drafted Jalex Hunt from Houston Christian. Um, to be completely honest, I have no idea who that so, is. So, for the, for the viewers at home who are maybe a little confused about that pick, at, at that pick specifically, you can go for a risky pick, and this kid is a freak athlete. He did really well in the Senior Bowl against some Division One players, and I mean, you got to have trust in the Vangio scheme. If he sees someone that he he thinks that can progress into a really solid defensive lineman, I'm willing to take that chance. Yeah, and. Um we did get, was the fourth round Johnny Wilson, that wide receiver? No, the fourth round was the Clemson running back. Off the top oh, of, yes. Yeah, off yeah, the I top remember of my that. head, I can't think of who it was. I don't remember his name. It's Will something. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's good. My dad said he watched him a lot in college football, and he was just a really small and dynamic running back. So a good, a good speed back to um, sit behind Saquon's power. And then in round five, obviously, I think if you heard the news, the Eagles drafted Jeremiah Trotter Jr., which there's not much to say about that. Um, just a really cool continuing of the father's legacy. And then after that, it was guard from Michigan, then it was Johnny Wilson, and then it was the center from uh, the North Carolina State. So overall, I give the Eagles draft a, a, a solid A. I think if they got a little bit of a better linebacker, it would be an A-plus for me because I think that's an underrated hole going into this season. But very satisfied we fixed the secondary problem. So it will set a solid A for me. All right, so game two about to get underway. Davis Holloway with the serve. All right, so the game two win. Could get the win in straight sets. And they started off with a point. Guess who it was Will Stubbs. And the set from Holloway was just a little bit off, but Will Stubbs doing a great job of just adjusting and putting it in a spot where the east side players weren't really expecting it. And a bit, mis bit of miscommunication there from the Tigers, and the Knights now with 13 straight points going back to game one. 2 nothing. Sterling here early. And the setup just could not go over the net. And the Tigers get their first point of game two. It's able to get the point back. And, Dan, we've talked about the uh, the Phillies. We've talked about the Eagles. And, unfortunately, we also have to talk about the Sixers. I've had my personal opinions about this throughout the day. I I'm starting to get really sick and tired of our ownership. Um, I think Embiid is a is borderline clown for disting the fan base that has sat behind him for almost a decade now. And he hasn't produced anything in the playoffs. Um, our owner just wants to be there for the money. Because if you don't know, the, the Sixers owner is Josh Harris, who owns the Commanders and the Devils, two of the biggest rivals of two Philly sports teams. 
and Daryl Morey has no clue what he's doing. So uh, the person, the people to blame are the people in the front office, and that's I'm just going to leave it there. But yeah, it was a tough loss in Game Four. Very tough loss against the Knicks in Game Five. They're going to New York, which is obviously not a favorable place to be, but. I mean, honestly, if you were watching games three and four at Wells Fargo Center, there were a pretty decent amount of Knicks fans in attendance. Which is why I made that previous statement with no context. Uh, Brian, thank you for providing some context for the people at no home. No context leaking? Yeah, I was a little angry about that yesterday. You can't make that comment uh, about our fan base and expect you know people to back you. But simply, New York has done a bit of a better job of – through this rough time of the Knicks franchise, you know, still providing their fans a little bit of hope. And, I mean, they were ready for this. And so so the Tigers get the point there. Davis Holloway took a <laughs> shot to the face. That's why I stopped talking for a sec. It was, I thought you were going to make a comment about it. That was a little funny. Looks to be okay. Looked to be laughing about it a little bit. Point goes to the Tigers. It's a 5-4 lead. But, Brian, if you're the former MVP... I, I can't believe you only scored one point in the fourth quarter of, of a playoff game. Very true. Well, the entire Sixers team didn't score a field goal after about the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter, which, which is, is horrible. unacceptable. Oh, God, yeah. And the point will go to the Knights as that one just barely stays in. But a uh, positive did come from the Sixers game yesterday. We're uh, bricking for chicken. For sure, yeah. We're going to be claiming that after this. Gives um, the Dan, Brian, and Jensen train a little snack after Tucker. So I'm happy. As am I. I'm really hungry. I am too. I'm saving my appetite for the bricking for chicken. Exactly. I'll get the bricking for chicken. I'll claim some fries from my rewards and uh, just go from there because... Yeah. You know, I don't want to spend too much money this week. Well, for the viewers at home who are watching, I appreciate uh, you guys listening to our Philly sports rants. That'll be pretty consistent for the rest of spring, especially, you know, in some of the sports where there's a little bit of dead time. It gives us some time to speak about other things going around uh, South Jersey and Philadelphia. So we appreciate everyone who tunes in and listens to uh, Brian and Danny talk about some Philly sports. Well, after this week, it's pretty much going to be just Phillies at Phillies, this point. Yeah. Which I wouldn't mind at this point because I'm sick of talking about the uh, Sixers. Yeah. Well, the they make, they make me a little angry. The only other sport off. I have been like slightly still watching is hockey because of the playoffs. Yeah, of the, of the playoffs, which they've been pretty darn fun. I will admit. Yeah, I mean, I had this discussion with a buddy earlier today, and the Washington Capitals did not deserve to be in that. Playoff not even spot. close. They they looked like they didn't even want to be there. Because when you when you look at the Flyers last three games against the Rangers, there's a one two loss, it was a six to seven loss, and then it was a five to two win. We were easily the more competitive team with the better team, and Washington just God, they were they weren't even there. Al Ovechkin was was just a ghost. He's also thirty eight years old and not getting any younger. He he literally is a ghost. Knights with an eight seven lead here in game two. I mean, I've also been watching because. Uh, my girlfriend's a Rangers fan, so mm. trust me, I'm no not fun. proud of it. No fun. I've been watching because uh, Brian and my mutual friend is a Los Angeles Kings fan, so I've been staying up and watching just a little bit of the Rangers, or excuse me, the Kings games. And the Rangers completed their sweep of the Capitals yesterday, so they'll face the winner of the Islanders Hurricane series. I don't know. I think I think, I think that's, that's who right. they. I think that's who they. That face. sounds correct. It sounds correct. Good job, Brian. Thank you. Look at you go. All knotted up at eight. And unfortunately for um, sports broadcasting, radio broadcasting teacher Rob Strauss, it looks like the uh, Maple Leafs time is coming to a short end in these playoffs, as once again they are more than likely going to be a first-round exit. Are you going to do the shush thing to him? No. I, I'm rooting for him because I really don't like Boston. And honestly, yeah, if, if someone can be happy, I, 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 I want it to be him. And a little bit of 
Miscommunication there between Holloway and Sam Boykin. It leads to a Tigers lead. Sterling with a game two win would win in straight sets. And what's important for Sterling is we saw them do it at the end of the um, the first set. It's it's important for them to really get going. Once they get going, the wheels start turning, and they really go on that roll. But they got to get there first. Yeah, so far in both games, the starts have been rather back and forth. I mean, it was 11-11 in game one, and right now it's 10-8. Make it 10-9. As that one went all the way to the bleachers on our near side. Knights within one. Sam Boykin will serve. Yeah, looking like they won. Coach McLaughlin wants the towers of power in that middle there with Ryan Horn and Vinny Marias as he makes that substitution, substituting out the libero, Noah McBride. Line drive serve. Strong kill right there from Marias. Knots things up at 10. And he has a really impressive left hand, and he really can hit that thing. Marius can't get that one over. He wanted that one. He wanted yeah, you that could one. Tell. That's a bit of a heat check right there. <laughs> McBride checks back in for the Knights. Boykin checks out. Point will go to the Knights. Ryan Horn showing a little bit of excitement afterwards. Yeah, Francisco Elias, the big man over there on the east side, really was up there, but just couldn't get enough of it to hit it back over. Tied at 11 yet again, but the Knights will quickly get the point to take their 12-11 lead. And right now seeing a similar story then from game one to game two. And the point goes to the Knights again. Great serve from Holloway. And the Knights doing a really good job of when, you know, Eastside tries to creep back in. They're doing a great job of just flipping the script and playing their game, sticking to what they know, and, you know, just finishing the job. And that's really been important in these first two sets. Tigers looking to get back into... A little bit of a rhythm here as Sterling holds a three-point advantage. And they just got frozen up right there. Yeah, miscommunication. And again, like you said, the Tigers just looking to get back in that rhythm. But Sterling's really in that swing right now, and it's going to be tough to get him out of it. Yeah, their libero Yadier Burgos showed a lot of frustration after that play. And Right now, he's on the bench by, by himself as we see a timeout here from the Tigers and a much-needed one at that because they just look lost. And a much-needed timeout, but this will also give us some time to talk about a nice little cool thing that happened around the castle today. Um, Culture Day, that was hosted in the old gym, um, powered by a lot of the students here at Sterling and uh, the mastermind, Miss Jordan, who does a ton for the culture of this school, and uh, it was a really cool event to be at. I got to try a couple different foods from a couple different places. Um, and yeah, it was just a really well-organized event during the school day that I attended and Jensen attended. Brian, unfortunately, could not attend. But yeah, I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't go, unfortunately. But it was a really nice and well-put-together event, so we want to thank uh, the student participation and Miss Jordan for putting on that really cool display for the students today. Yeah, I kind of wish I was able to go, but, you know, I guess class has to come first. Wah. 
That's going to go out. Point will go to Sterling. Dan, what kind of foods did you try? Do you, do you remember? So I remember I had some, some cannoli dip from the Italian station. Um, I had some rice. I don't remember what station that was from, but it was really good. Like, it wasn't normal rice. It was, it was pretty delicious. And then um, Karina had me try something from, it might have been the Haiti station. And, like, everything there was delicious. Oh, I also had some fried bread from the uh, um, Indigenous People Station. Amazing. Very delicious. I suggest if you have never tried fried bread before that you tried it. Made by Aaliyah Smith as well. So shout out to her. Yeah, I'll have to give that a try when I can. That, that sounds very yummy. <laughs> it was really yummy, man. It, it was some good. It, there was a lot of good food there today. Two straight points for the Tigers. It's now a three-point game. Sterling on top, 16 to 13. And the Knights will get the one point back. Yeah, just a really Im impressive put together. Um, a lot, a little bit more organized than since last year. Because I remember last year it was a huge line to get in. And you really kind of had to push your way. Yeah, that's what I, I was. I remember we were all at that one last year. Yeah. Very cluttered space in the old gym, but. Totally, 100%. It was a lot more put together this year, a lot more organized. There's some great food, um, some really good music going on in the background. It just seemed like a great time. In there. So, again, uh, thank you to Ms. Jordan and all the student participation for putting like, together that awesome event. Sheriff sure could not go over from Rodriguez. 18 to 15. Tigers do get it over. Strong volley between both teams. It'll go out and the Knights will win it. So it's now 19 to 15. Will Stubbs using his IQ, except for going for that big power shot, really just gave it a little bit of a love tap, and it caught the Tigers defenders off guard. And you know, Sterling doing a great job of just trying to pull away and not stay in a stalemate. So okay. now the Knights five points away from a game to win and a win here in straight sets. And that's exactly what makes Will Stubbs so dangerous. I just commented on his IQ, and that time he went full power mode and really turned turned on the Jets a little bit with that one, and that was a really nice spike from Will Stubbs. So a timeout called, 20 to 15, the Knights on top. Five points away from a win here in straight sets against Camden East side, which would improve their record to three and 10, but East side looking to play spoiler here and take this to a game three. Not out of reach for them yet, Definitely not, and an important thing to do in volleyball, or make sure you don't do in volleyball, is start to get jittery. Once you get that lead, you start moving a little bit more, doing some unnecessary things, just making sure you stay content, make sure you stay calm, cool, and collected, and just play your game. All right, so just waiting for the Tigers to break their huddle. They'll do so now. All right, so we are ready. Coming out of this timeout, and the Knights will get a point as it goes out of play, 21 to 15. And remember, each of the last five games the Knights have played, they've all been decided in straight sets. And this one could be included in that as well. He's finally very back and forth. And 
Nice kill right there from Fernando Sanchez Batista. And a little bit more of a, a fun stat if Sterling wins this one. We mentioned earlier that would be their third win of the season and that would also be their third win against a Camden Associated team. Yeah, their other two wins against Camden Academy Charter and Camden High School. Bit of a fun statistic. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Took me a bit to notice that, but once I was like reading it, I'm like, huh, look at that. Also be a great way to end April. Twenty two sixteen, Knights lead it. That one goes out, that'll head towards us, but not quite high enough, and the Knights two points away. And the Tigers again have yet to find a way to stop that swing, and Sterling just keeps going with it. You just got to capitalize on their weaknesses, and it's exactly what the Knights have been doing all day. That one can't go over. One more point, and the Knights win it. And that'll do it. Will Stubbs with the final serve here in game two, and the Knights are victorious in straight sets and against Camden East side. And it's only fitting that Will Stubbs is the one to finish it off. I mean, after missing the first, what is it, what would that be, 12 games of the season, he comes back for the 13th and brings his team to a victory. That's awesome to see. The Knights move to 3-10 and 10 on the year. Camden East side will drop to 1-8 and eight on the season. And Sterling overall, I mean, Dan, me and you can agree on this, they looked like the much better team here today. Yep, they looked a little bit more organized. And I think, you know, with Will Stubbs back in the lineup, they look like they found that missing piece that really just brings the, the team together, that missing glue, almost to say, that really organizes the team, brings them together for a little bit more of offense possession, a little bit less of, you know, the free balls straight to the other team. And as we got the camera on us discussing, I think this is be a good way to end it off. For sure. That'll so that will do it here on Sterling Channel 19. I'm Brian McLernan. Thanks to Dane Leakin. Thanks to Jensen Gould for being on camera here today. I'm Brian McLernan saying so long and as always, good, good night. night.